Hey there, so today is glue day. We're gonna be talking about all the glues that we use here at the studio. This is Zaina, this is Daiza, and I'm Kina. And we use glue all the time, and we just wanted to share our thoughts about glue. So I thought I'd start off with the one that we talk about the most with customers, which is Mod Podge Gloss. Daiza, what are your feelings about Mod Podge Gloss? How do you use oh, it? Oh, it's super versatile, and it has a nice sheen. Um, it's flexible enough. You um, did have one problem with it, though, didn't you? The green suit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, good not good for fabric. <laughs> fabric especially uh, really <laughs> flexible, uh, Lycra-like fabric. Yeah, it got really stiff, um, so that wasn't good for it. Um, I like to use it because I like to mix glitter glue. So I'll actually take some glue, and then I'll mix the glitter into it and make a glitter glue and then apply it uh, on a brush. So that's kind of the way I, I like to use it. How, how have you been using it? Um, I like to usually do a really light coat and then put the glitter on top, like to spray it. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll use it as the sealer also. It just depends. Oh, yeah. it so you're putting it over the top. So yeah. the, the reason why I mix it as a glitter glue is because I'm um, sometimes in a hurry. Like most of the time I'm in a hurry. So if you're putting it down as a glitter glue, you don't have to do that seal coat. So that's kind of why I like to do the glitter glue thing. I actually just do it all in one, so I'm, I'm putting it down as an adhesive and a sealer all at once. Um, if you do do it as a sealer, keep in mind that this um, will block light. So if you do, like, uh, some people like to seal and seal and seal, and they'll call up and say, my glitter isn't the same color, you know, I put three coats of sealer on it and, and it changed color. Well, that's because you're making it harder for the light to pass through the sealer and actually hit the flake of glitter and reflect back to your eyes. So what did you discover about this? So this works with um, with that good amount of the poly glitter, but some of the craft will actually lose its color and you'll see the color bleeding into the into the super gloss, the triple thick. Um, I know we definitely found it with a rose gold yep. um, in the craft. Um, some of them are definitely likely to lose their color as well. It's a little bit different. I'm not quite sure what um, what's different in the ingredients yet, but it doesn't work with all of the craft. time to talk about outdoor Mod Podge. So I have no experience with it. You have done a project with it. What'd you do? I did an outdoor garden sculpture of a peacock and it, it went well. It did uh, take a little bit longer to dry, eh, but it was clean, easy to put on, easy to clean up. And um, you just, you put it down and then it, sprinkled on top? Yeah, I put okay. it down and sprinkled it on top. Okay. And I haven't seen how it turned out because it is somewhere else that I don't know. Who has it, Emily Rose? <laughs> Some person in the community no. has it. <laughs> it you got awesome. raffled off to raise money. <laughs> Things happen like that around here. Okay, Tab, yeah. so you have some experience as well. So I do. I did a, um, I did a mailbox, and I used a glitter glue. So I mixed the glitters into the glue and then painted them onto the mailbox. It's doing wonderful. It sparkles and shines as the sun hits it. Um, so far, the mail person has not complained that they can't see my mailbox. <laughs> you know, my, my comment on that mailbox was it seemed like it took forever to dry. It did. It did take, we left it inside to dry for the most part because it was kind of messed up weather outside. Yep. So it took, I want to take about two and a half days. At least, because I was, I was handling it many days afterwards and I felt, I didn't feel like it, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was like wet. It just felt like when I touched it, it was almost like rubberized, but it kind of felt kind a little of wet. Is it still like that? No, no. The so heat, it feels hard. The heat of the summer has really it cooked it. hardened it up and finished the, the curing process. Um, the one thing I'm going to recommend, though, is if you do a glitter mailbox, make sure to roughen the outside mm -hmm. before you apply the glue. Mm -hmm. The sections that were rougher are tended to hold onto the glue better mm -hmm. than... The shinier parts, so yeah, I can see where that would be. Make sure to roughen up the outside before you glitter your mailbox. Cool. So let's see. We've got um, 
Okay, dishwasher safe. Has anyone used a dishwasher safe? I have. Okay. I've used it on wine glasses. Again, it just works like your standard Mod Podge. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a it longer dry on, period, though, isn't it? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. It went on clean. Um, it was easy to clean up. It was not too absorptive, although you don't have to worry about that with glass. I think Tabby <laughs> did a teapot with it on ceramic, and it turned out great. And I believe we've run it through the dishwasher. Now, it's t uh, the top shelf only on the dishwasher. Okay. They don't want you uh, down lower, so there is some things to keep in mind. Read the fine print before you go. And, and but it's also, but it's FDA. It is, food. yeah. Basically, yeah. if you're going to do anything that's, that's making contact with food, this is one of your options for an adhesive. Yeah. And you can hand wash it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, is it still gloss? Does it say gloss on it? It's still gloss. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, safe gloss. Have you ever used it? No, okay. I have a project coming up for it that I'm considering doing, and um, I actually decided I think I'm going to do the Mod Podge dishwasher safe because it's food approved. Yep. Yeah. Doing a cake stand for there you go. Shoots. There you go. Oh. That would do it. Yep. But that's pretty important. Yeah, it is absolutely. You don't have a lot of options. Aline's tacky glue. Um, this one here, it comes out white and dries clear again. Uh, it's a general crafting glue. I tend to use it for um, crafts projects. Uh, I don't tend to use it on, uh, I think they say it's okay for fabrics, but I never use it for fabrics. I prefer to use ones that are made for it. Um, you can uh, make a glitter glue with this one too, but I find that it works like if you're like in a, in a kids program or something And you wanted to write the kids name like Matthew and then sprinkle the glitter over the top That's the glue I would use right there. It comes in a nice uh, You know dispenser um, The tip is pretty fine. And so you can do a lot of writing it also for filigree work works pretty good So but more craft -based. more craft based is what I would do. Yeah, we did Mother's Day um some glass catchers with Jace, and that came out pretty well. Um, I'd say it dried don't, clear. Yeah, it dried really clear. Um, I haven't seen any yellowing yet. Um, only thing it didn't dry very well with the the gel food coloring mm -hmm. in some sections, but that may be more the food coloring. Yeah. So you gotta mix it really well with food coloring. <laughs> and how's the adhesion? Does it? It sticks to just about anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's. I it's a it's a pretty amazing uh, glue. It's been on the market for decades. I mean, mm -hmm. long, long time, <laughs> and it's just an old favorite. And it comes in different size bottles. So if you're working with little kids, you can get these little bottles for little hands, um, and you can get the big ones. I don't know if I've ever seen it in gallons or anything, but you can get them in, in different size bottles for different age groups and stuff. And it's not very expensive, and you can find it everywhere. It's like in every craft store in the whole United States, if not the world. <laughs> so that one's a good one. It's a good fallback glue and certainly part of any studio. Okay, so um, next we have the um, clear uh, gel tacky glue. So I really don't use this. Um, I, uh, I like to have my designs go down white, so I'm more apt to use something that's uh, white. I do that so that I can really see my design. When it goes down clear, you can't see your edges, and I'm really careful about my edges. I like everything to be kind of you know perfect if I can. So I avoid this, but Tabby, of all the people sitting here, has used this one the most for her common jars, which are conveniently behind me. Mm -hmm. We have some lovely ones behind you. Um, I tend to go for a mixture of glitters with these, um, but for the most part, between the Elmer's Clear and the Tacky Clear, the Tacky Clear, um, you can use less because it's a thicker gel. You have to use more of the Elmer's Glue with your mix if you want a slow falling jar. Um, tacky Glue is thick. I like it. I tend to put extra light on whatever projects I'm using with it if, it, if I'm actually painting it onto something, just so that I can see those edges that, that Kina was talking about. Um, it is thicker. Um, it, it really does do a good job of holding. The Elmer's glue is more like corn syrup, 
so it won't necessarily have that thick consistency some people want with their projects. Yeah, you can see just in the bottle it moves much faster than the gel. Yeah. So that's interesting. Oh, way back. Oh, it yeah, is way slow. slow. So when you're adding these to the calming jars, not that we're going to get into that because we have a whole video on it, but you're adding warm water to these in both cases, right? I am. I'm adding warm water to make it a little more pliant and because I like the way that the warm water causes the craft glitters to melt into the liquid and color the liquid. Yeah, they do, they bleed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the tacky is a much thicker than the Elmer's, and I, I tend to like the tacky better. Um, okay, it's time to move into the kids glue. So this one here is another clear one, very similar to this. Um, <laughs> I actually find it to be more, more stable even than the Eileen's. It's been around uh, about the same amount of time. It's extremely clear, great for the jars, mm -hmm. just like we had the Tabby's uh, common jars. It works for slime, too. That's right. Also regular glue, but yeah. you want yeah. clear <laughs> slime and glitter. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. um, if you want to make your own glitter glue, this is a, a great way to go. Um, it, uh, it, you can just literally just dump glitter into it and give it a good stir and make your own um, glitter glues with it. So uh, it's great for that. Keep in mind that metallic glitters, when you mix them into glues like this, can off gas. So you don't want them to get warm. You want to keep them in a, a fairly cool or room temperature environment. Um, this is the same company. They've made a glue that's already uh, pre-made. Um, they actually, what they've done here is used an iridescent, and the reason they've used iridescent is to avoid that off-gassing. So if you don't want to think about off-gassing, use the iridescent uh, glitters that we sell, and they won't off-gas. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a technological thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought we'd move on to fabric. So, have you guys used Tulip yet? I've used their products, but not this specific okay. one. So, I think I did... What, okay. Like puff glue. I've used the puff glue. The puff glue. Puff, <laughs> puff, you know, like from the yeah. 90s. <laughs> These guys are, I would consider, pretty pro. Um, I, I use it. I'll show it to you here. It comes with a, a very small bottle. It comes with a couple cosmetic sponges to apply it. You can certainly use the sponges if you want to. Um, I use brushes. Uh, I like it. I used it on those shoes that I did the other day, the, um, the Incos, mm -hmm. and I laid it down and it's, it's extremely thin, uh, the adhesive's great, and uh, I was able to put it down, put the glitter on top, but then I ended up sealing it with a, a Mod Podge, so I didn't seal over the top of it with this one. I just went ahead and um, used it as my base. But I love it. It's very flexible. I put it on a t-shirt that I did for a blog post, mm -hmm. and that was over a year ago, and I've washed it many, many mm -hmm. times since then, and it's still on there without a sealer. Mm -hmm. So, have you, you've not used the tulip? No. Okay. It's really I good for stretchable, things. flexible, and that's what I would recommend for, for professional costumes, would be this brand here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just really, really good. I have used this one, the Eileen's mm -hmm. Flexible Stretchable. And it's really reliable, and um, and it, the one t-shirt I did with it is still intact. It was about a year ago. Um, it's it's lost maybe like fifteen percent of the glitter. Mm -hmm. Did you overcoat it or just use it underneath? I just used it underneath. Mm -hmm. I didn't seal it. Yeah, I find that it's extremely tacky, and you don't even really have to overcoat. It actually works, you know, just fine without. Uh, have you used it yet? Yeah. Um, I think it was either this one or the other one on the boots. Okay. I think so. So on the cowboy boots or the other foot? Yeah, it was either this one or Mod Podge. <laughs> okay. But yeah, sometimes I did use part of it on some of them. Yeah. It, and it came out pretty, and because it's leather, yeah. it's a little more more of the stretchy. If you're doing t-shirts, this is the one. Mm -hmm. you, you can literally put it on. I put it on a white t-shirt and I put it on the pattern. It's a very ornate t-shirt uh, pattern and I just was able to pull it and it it held so it, it really is stretchable and flexible mm -hmm. uh, the one sitting next to it's Eileen's okay to wash 
This one here, I consider to be, um, it's not as stretchable, it's not as flexible, but it really is okay to wash. You can wash it and wash it and wash it and wash it, and it really holds on tight. Mm -hmm. So, I did not use that one. Yeah, it's it, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, I, I mean, if I had to pick between the two just to have in my studio, I would always pick this one. But um, for something like a costume where it's going to be a long run and you're going to have to wash your costume over and over uh, and you don't have a lot of flexing, that one is the one I would choose. I believe that you may be the only person here who's used this. Is that true? Have you used it? <laughs> the glitter it. Okay, it's for glass, and I bought it for um, Tabby because she wanted to do a bunch of Christmas ornaments. And it's fabulous. go ahead. It's it's fabulous. Um, you can make your glitter ornaments on the inside. So you take a little bit of liquid, you swirl it around on the inside of your glass. Like the balls. Glass balls, and you can do shapes, you can do swirls, you just have to make sure that you let it dry in between, and this does dry very quickly. If you're trying to paint it on yeah. and put your glitter on top of it, um, it, it's fast, so you really have to work quickly if you're going to be painting it onto your glass items. If you're swirling it on the inside, it tends to not dry as quickly, but it still dries pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Well, that, if, it, if, you're, if it dries as fast as you say, and I, I remember that being a problem, that means it's solvent-based, so that means that if you're using it with craft glitter, that you could easily get some bleeding. How we did there, have a little bleeding with the reds. Was there any off-gassing that you noticed? Did it uh, have a scent? Or? It has some scent, yeah, but... Uh, it has a small scent, mm -hmm. but I made sure I had a fan on when I was working. I always have fans on when I work, just because it, it's... You don't want that surprise. Yeah, um, as I recall, it, it, it is uh, like a solvent base. So if you're using it with craft, now the thing that's interesting is, is that even if it was solvent based, the fact that it does dry so fast, and that is that if the craft glitter hits it, um, it's probably not going to have much time to ruin it. You know, it's going to hit it and then it's going to solidify and it's going to be like the craft's going to be like, hey, I should bleed, but then it won't because it's already. Dry. dry. So my guess is that's why we it's were finding. Yeah, that's why it was it was working for her, um, mm -hmm. and it wasn't bleeding everywhere and being terrible. No, it was just a bare minimum of of noticing um, a little matte finish. Not not really bad, but I noticed on the craft. It on the craft, I noticed it because I was right there and up close to it. But with Polly, you'd have no problem. Polly wouldn't have a problem with it. Moving on to little fun things. Um, Martha Stewart makes a, a variety of different pens that are out there. Now, okay, this is the deal, all right? Um, it doesn't put down a lot of glue, mm. okay? So like if you think, oh, it's really handy to have this glue here, I'll just spread it along here and then I'll take my time and I'll glitter, 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 glitter. No, it just doesn't put down enough. It, it's, it's, it will work, but you better use like ultra fine or fine glitter and you, um, need to and you gotta do you gotta do it fast uh it's just not putting down enough you know with with uh, glitter and adhesives especially like this ballpoint i think it's a ballpoint no it's just the fine tip it just isn't putting enough to like really grip hold of of the glitter and so you'll get tons and tons of flaking so it doesn't mean not to use them because boy isn't it handy to write somebody's name and then being able to glitter it. It just means work really fast and you might have to end up sealing a little bit. Well, it also looks like those metallic pins that you have to actually juice it up yeah. by, by pressing it down in yeah. you. you have to and do. so you perhaps do. in the middle of a part of your project, you could yeah. press down again to get more yeah. glue into the pin, yeah. but that would also be a pain. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if I were gonna, uh, if I were doing a project and I, I needed to write a million kids' names, I would certainly pull them out I would, but I would use ultra fine poly is what I would do, or ultra fine something, you know, uh, because I just don't think it's enough. Now, these glue sticks you can, as you guys know, everyone's used, they put down more glue. They're actually actually quite a bit of glue, and yes, they do dry fast, but kind of gooey. Yeah, they are gooey, and you're gonna have craft. Yeah, and you have like no edge. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to lay down tape. 
You know, keep the glue and then pull your, your edge. Yeah, you have to have a more of a controlled situation yeah. with it. I like to use my hands with those and really press in the glitter if I have to use those. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise I find that they don't really stick like some of that other, the wetter glue is embedded. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing about adhesives, you know, you really have to have a, a bed for the glitter to stick to or, or else it's just going to, you know, fall off. And that's what everyone... I, I personally... Uh, don't seal as much as most people because I'm really concentrating on on the glue bed and so I don't get as much flaking as somebody who's concentrating more on the the sealing unless I, I'd rather put down and spend my time on the glue mm -hmm. than on the ceiling so I'm very very you know heavy underneath <laughs> <laughs> and for me, that's one of the reasons why I really like making a glitter glue, yeah. is because it, it already seals it. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. This is another product, um, it's another Elmer's, and it's wet. Um, it has two tips on it, one uh, is bigger, and one I think that's fine. So, let's move on to... Uh, Daisa, take oh, yeah. it, take it away. Well, I I do a lot of painting and I use this um, medium as a lot anyway. So I just it was a natural transition to glitter. Um, it's a lot like Mod Podge, but it's thinner and it's a little bit translucent. Are you putting um, it on with a brush? I put it on with a brush. I make a, a glitter glue. I. Um, Is this what you did with the mural? No. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah, because I, I remember seeing, I remember you used something, but I just did an accent, but not all over. Okay. Um, it's it's pretty basic, glue like. It does have a nice flexibility. Um, Is it going on white? It goes on like a milky, milky, and then dries. it dries clear. But um, it what? might have some leaching with uh with craft. Yes, right, because it's it, very so watery. maybe just use it with polyester. Um, but it is what yeah, it's water based, so the cleanup isn't too hard, and um, and it would work great over accents of your own painting. So if you, yeah. you're a painter, or you have you know uh, something. Yeah, it has a nice viscosity though. I over like acrylics and so forth. Flow. Cool. Okay, um, let's do some spray glue. So, um, <laughs> Tabby. Has a lot of experience with this one, <laughs> as you'll see if you watch our videos. Uh, live flowers, dried flowers, live mm -hmm. trees, dead trees. <laughs> it, yeah. So, there, this, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about spray glue, just briefly, and then we'll let Tab go into some more detail. Um, Super 77 and these uh, Design Master, these two glues are very different. And what's different is that this thing's going to put down uh, basically a, a surface that is not going to overly penetrate whatever you put it on. So if you're putting it on a piece of cardboard, it's actually going to sit on top of the cardboard like as a web, mm -hmm. which is great because when it's uh, not doing that, as in the case of this, it's actually soaking into the cardboard. So when that happens, you are losing a lot of stickiness. However, you don't always want a web. So just this week, we had a situation where we wanted to spray feathers and the web was used and the web made the feathers into a web <laughs> and it connected it. Whereas this one, it would have sat a little bit better on top. Uh, it doesn't make a web. It, it doesn't penetrate. Which holds better? This one, always. Is it always the right choice? No. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, this is going to put down a, a, a web. And there's a video on this that's put out by the 3M people. I highly recommend watching it. He'll go into the whole details of it. And I, I watch it. Always test. Yeah, always test. Always this, test. The Super 77 um, on the fabric, I did the bodysuit as well. And it was it flakes off a lot on fabric. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't. It didn't. Like you said, hold, absorb. Yep. But um, for for like a quick costume idea, I think that that, that the Super Seventy Seven could do all right. It's a fast glue. Like if I had a stage set, and my director said, you know, tonight we've decided to have a glittered element, 
a prop or a stage prop, I would grab this out because you can have it done in seconds. You're, you're literally spraying it and glittering it and it's done in five, 10 minutes, you're done. Like you have to work really, really fast with glitter. This isn't something like, if you read the directions, it says, wait 20 minutes to get tacky. No, you don't wait at all. You just immediately do you it. Just put it straight you, on. And not only do you put it on, you put it on heavy mm -hmm. and you do it. It will stick and it works great. So, you know, I, this is this can get you out of a lot of jams if you're in a hurry. Like if I had a float and I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna look so much better with glitter right there. That's the one I would grab. But not, not super permanent. No, I, I certainly wouldn't go for any sort of uh, long-term permanent work on that. This one, I would not um, do on stage sets. It just, it's gonna soak into the, uh, into the um, materials way too much. But And stiffen it up. Yeah, for live plants. For live plants, there's only one thing I'm going to say about this. Um, the heavier you put it onto the plant, the more likely you are to kill your plant. Mm. You don't want a heavy layer of this on a live plant. Yeah. Um, I, I did it, I did half of a plant heavy and half of a plant live. The half that was heavy died within five days. The other half was still going strong. Um, and on the plants that I did do the, the lighter coating on it, they're still alive. What about the uh, fake flowers? Did they, did, they, did it hold well? It did hold well. Mm -hmm. It stayed real, real good on it. But on the fake flowers, or fake plants, yeah, actually, I put an, a heavier coating on it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, sprinkle it on. That way it holds better. You would not want to put... The, without yeah, the webbing. Exactly. If you put that on a live it plant, looks like a spider you're gonna, plant. it's ugly. I mean, it's just plain ugly. You would never want to do it on something you would look... One, this is more, let's say, translucent, transparent. This and is more delicate. This is more opaque and like literally web-like. This this actually looks like a spider web. It does. Sprayed properly, <laughs> it's a spider web. Yeah. Whatever you put it on. Yeah. Um, You're gonna want to. Whereas take, uh, the the glitter for glue, it, it's a very delicate one, and it's great for live plants if you just want to do a, a quick like, special like poinsettia for Christmas. Yeah. You know. You're Give gonna want to take a, a take health precautions with the Super 77, yes. because if you get the glue in your lungs, it's really It's pretty mental. strong. It, it is, it's really strong. Dress, um, I always tell people, like, respirators. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was, that was something I had to mask. keep Chase out of the way for that one. Mm -hmm. Spray it before the It's spray. also a mess. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. It goes everywhere. <laughs> you know, you have to really think about overspray. Like, if you're doing it, you know, inside, uh, even outside, I mean, you get it on your hands, it just, it literally goes everywhere. Uh, I consider it to be, you know, an absolutely incredibly important tool for uh, any sort of, you know, uh, artist and graphic artist and crafter. But it, as far as glitter goes, it's sort of my my get out of you know trouble uh, fast Wait. card. Yeah, I don't you, I don't think. Hey, you know what the best thing would be to do is to grab that Super Seventy Seven. I don't think like that. Like on the Fourth of July, it was like we had last minute props. It was like I'm gonna grab the Super Seventy Seven because we gotta like get this done. I never, never grab it as my first glue choice, but I love it because it does actually work really good and fast. <laughs> it really does. Aquanet unscented. <laughs> it's essentially a lacquer and uh, it's sticky for a short period of time. Um, it is one of those things where for costuming, I love it. When you want to have a, a flowy dress and you want it to stay flowy and not get crunchy, um, this is great. You know, you can, uh, you can spray that beautiful, you know, lace dress. You can blow glitter onto it. You can spray some more onto it and it will hold and it will stay on there and it will, it will not be crunchy. Uh, you don't, you, it's like magic. You have no idea how it even got there. If you wash it, it will pretty much wash out and you'll have to do it again. So that's the drawback. But velvet, feathers, lace, these kinds of materials, uh, it's excellent. Yeah, um, it saved our feathers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We actually <laughs> recovered the feathers with it. So uh, I, I highly recommend the Aquanet um, because it's, uh, they call it the extra super hold. Um, basically, it, it's it's lacquer. All these newfangled ones, they don't want you to put lacquer in your hair, so they come up with all these other mediums, uh, you know, to, to not put lacquer on. But that's not good for glitter. We want the lacquer. <laughs> so the cheap old unscented aquanet is what I recommend for that.
it does work really well with hair since it's hair spray. It does. We yeah, use the that. black light actually. We tried a couple different ways to add the black light powder and the glitter into hair and the the hairspray was the only thing that really helped. We used it on the body, we used it um, in hair. Um, another one that we have is um, this mousse. It's a, a really good quality mousse um, and you can actually just pump it into your hand, uh, put glitter onto it, and then just work it through your hair. Um, it's great. It really, really works well and it's not hard on your hair at all and it's a good way to sort of distribute. Uh, the nice thing about it is once you've got it between your fingers you can just grab strands and you can pull strands. You can also use it for your beard. So we guys have guys come in for glitter beards and it can be used for that too. I don't think any of you have done this yet so no, I might be the only one on that. You give it a shot, you'll love it. This one here is a, uh, another Giovanni product and it is uh, a really have you guys used it yet? It's yeah, really tacky. it's really tacky. So if you want to do sculpting, uh, it is really the the way to go. It will hold. You could do a mohawk kind of or faux hawk. And whatever. that stuff is magic. Yeah, this is stuff. this literally <laughs> is magic. It's uh, by Avita, and uh, I'll put up the bottle on the screen so you can see it. Uh, it comes out powdered. So if you put it in your hand, you're looking at like kind of a powder, and it it moves around your hand like powder. You add the glitter to it. You take it between your finger and your hand, and as you it rub it, creams. it creams. It becomes cream. It's like this kind of like you know, Magic. I don't know. It's like a Twilight Zone experience, and, and that was, can be pulled through your beard and your hair. It will also stick to your hands really. Yeah, nicely. yeah. It's actually really nice for uh, like a hand glitter because you know when your hands have glitter on it with lotions, it tends to flake off because you're doing so much with it. This it's will so, stay on. It. You, you have to use. <laughs> You have to use soap and water and a good scrub brush or a good scrub sponge to get this stuff off your hands. I yeah. had it stuck on my hands at the fourth of July. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's true, but it's it's really really good. Okay, so um, we're gonna move on to using a, a, just a few of these. These are sealers as opposed to. Um, as opposed to glues, but sealers can uh, be the glue. So I uh, use polycrylic a lot, so I will actually, I, I can do it two ways. One, you can brush polycrylic gloss on, put the glitter on top, let it dry, put polycrylic over the top, or you can mix it in and brush it on. Have you used polycrylic yet? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. So I, I find it to be, um, it's sort of like a more yes. viscous version of this. That's it's, exactly right. It's the right. same like chemical compounds. That's but, right. Um, and yeah, it has it, it has it's nice and watery and yeah. I I find that it is uh, it it dulls a little. How is it with craft? It is. It will bleed. It will it's bleed a water based thing, but not all craft glitters are going to bleed. So it's a test situation. Mm -hmm. I know that I used it with red. Um, I think it was the gala red, maybe. Maybe it was the Very Merry. Mm -hmm. It bled a little bit, mm -hmm. but I did it on a red wall. Mm. So when it bled, it didn't matter. Yeah. You know, so I prepped my wall red, put it on, and the bleeding didn't matter. But you used to say it dulls it a little bit? I think it does. Mm. I think it does. I, I know that it's um, certainly non-toxic. You don't have to wear a respirator. Um, it's uh, found at every hardware store. It's Minwax, um, but yeah. I think it dulls, but you know, if you want something that's easy and fast and like a, a one-shot wonder as a glue and a sealer all in one. There are some plastics that you probably don't want to use it. We had a customer who was using um, the polyacrylic to try and try and finish a project um, to seal it and use it with glitter. And was it the I think that was ornaments? The, uh, it was glass plastic ornaments, wasn't it? Yeah. And it milk it made it milky or something. I think it, it turned it. She said it, it started to look like it was turning brown or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on to the next. Um, I just recently did a project with this, and, so, and Dice is actually currently doing one. Um, I did it over wood. This is barathane uh, made. It's called their spar urethane. When you open it up, it says clear. It is yellow. <laughs> it is yellow. It is yellow. Um, never ever 
use yellow with glitter unless you're okay on it changing color. So I was doing it on wooden banisters. It was supposed to look like a pirate ship. I wanted the wood to be slightly tinted. I didn't care that my glitter got tinted with it. It worked for me. Dice is doing a cactus, kind of the same deal. Yeah, but I'm using it as a glue. I'm not sealing it with that one yet. We'll see what happens when I do. I'm, I'm putting, putting it down a thin layer and then I'm taking a dry brush of the glitter and putting it over. It's working great. It's holding. Um, I'm not having it. The, the metal is painted black, so it's not, um, I'm not seeing the yellowing yet. Hopefully I won't. Technically it shouldn't come through. It would only be if you could just choose to go over the top of it. Mm -hmm. But they do talk about, I think this one says UV inhibitors. Yeah. Maybe. But it's really smelly. <laughs> yeah. The glass is skinny. It's, um, yeah, it but it, it works for outdoor, outdoor yeah. sculptures and outdoor uses. Yeah, it's, it, it's, I, I just go into it knowing that clear means nothing to these people. <laughs> nothing. Not this particular brand, we're not sure yet about the Minwax. Yeah, there's but a couple of them. might be I, I just, the well, worst of right. the yellowing. Whenever you see the spar, they're basically, yeah, we don't care. Uh, you know, it's just it's gonna, it's gonna like be, yeah, it's a like, a, schlep it on. yeah, they're expecting you to be doing it over wood, they know you don't care that it gets yellow tinted, um, but honestly, the banister turned out great, I mean, it looks very nice, it looks like I actually almost sort of, um, stained it. Right, if you're, if, if, it's a, yeah. if it's a, yeah, intentional, but use, just, yeah, you just it, realize it that if you put it over the top, if you use it as, vision. yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you use it as a glue like she just did, groovy, you're probably not gonna see it, it's not a problem. But if you're doing it in a situation where it's a sealer, which is, like I said, we'll talk about in another video, you're going to have a different situation. Okay, um, this one is back to polyacrylic, but as a, a spray. Same kind of deal um, as any spray. It's going to dry fast. I bet your working time is minutes, which means seconds. So that means if you're spraying it down as a glue, get your glitter on as fast as possible. And have it ready. It, yeah, have it ready to roll. Plan Spray out. one hand, glitter <laughs> the other hand. Seriously. Work fast. Or work with two people. You mm -hmm. know, um, any kind of spray. You just don't have a lot of time. And they, that's most people want that. Most people want fast drying. They'll see, oh, extra fast drying, you know. Great, except for when you're glittering because, you know, you got a whole other process after spraying. I have not used that. Yeah, it's going to dull it down a little How bit. How does it absorb? Does it absorb into... It, it, will, it will sit. It likes... It's okay on painted surfaces. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, per it would like uh, regular wood better. Um, you know, there's definitely limitations to what it, you can put it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it, it's, it's not so wet that you'll get bleeding probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it also, because it's not so wet, it's not going to grab it as well. Yeah. So be careful about using that as an adhesive. Diza. Oh, yeah. Epoxy oh, girl. Epoxy. So I've epoxied barrettes and glass and sculptures. Wood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, um, I work, I'm currently making some casts. I have some uh, bezels I'm going to be doing. Um, it's a super versatile, beautiful with glitter product. Um, low VOC, so it's not incredibly toxic. Um, this particular one is not food safe. We have one that is approved by the FDA, but Easy Cast is yeah, a good go-to adhesive for glitter. You do have to mix the two equal parts um, thoroughly for about two minutes. It's, you know, you want to make sure that you have the right proportions, otherwise it's never going to cure. But um, it's really pretty with glitter. Yeah, I've been using the um, same company puts out Poron, uh, which is a high gloss finish. So I've been using this one, same kind of deal, except um, thinner. This one, you can get a you know, actually cast it uh, deeper. These are for more like a covering, uh, like tables and, and bars and stuff. Yeah, that's more for the that one. Casting? Yeah. Um. Well, the, the thing about it is when you're using it in terms of a glue, like when I used it as a glue, I actually mixed up these little small batches. I mixed the glitter into it. I took a brush and I very, very carefully, I actually like painted it like paint. And I kept the temperature in the room down. And it actually held on to the lines and I was able to do very, very intricate work with it. Now, when it gets warm, it starts to flood and flow. So if you work cold and it says to do it at around between 70 and 75 degrees. Is that what we did the recent kitchen for? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you do it 
too hot, you get no definition. It, it doesn't act like a paint. It, it wants to be going, and it wants it warm so that it can go and flow beautifully and, and then drop and it's beautiful. Working on it as like a glue type uh, thing, you gotta work cold. 65 degrees, something like that, or, or even a little colder. Yeah, you'll lose all definition. Absolutely. You don't have and it's just and gonna take longer to dry. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I actually, I've actually used a little bit of this, and the, the, the point that I found out was the longer you let it sit, the thicker it becomes. Totally. And so that, that's it doing its cure thing. So you can let it sit for like thirty it, minutes before you work with it. Yeah, and 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 make sure that you've the most of the bubbles will come out of it. Yeah, um, it's, no, she's right. It's going to become thicker to work with, so it's not going to have as much of that flooding. But definitely keep the temperature lower because even as it gets thicker, if it's too warm, it's going to become more liquid and do that that flooding situation. Yeah, no, she's right. Um, letting it thicken up is definitely, you know, Diza and I recently did a, a kitchen floor that sort of failed. Uh, it was too warm, too warm. And also, uh, we ended up cooling it down with air conditioning, certainly, but we also let it sit longer. So it would sit in the cups for 20 minutes or so, or 15 minutes if we could wait that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of let mine go for like half an hour. No, like half hour. I just right. put it off to the side and did something else and came back to it. And, yeah, yeah. And have, it was thicker by then. Have you worked with it and have anything to add or just basically what no, we said? No, not this one. Yeah. Started with the Easy Cats, but not this one yet. Yeah, okay. This one, it, the Easy Cats as well. You let it sit. Like I did mm -hmm. a tumbler. And it's you thicker. Just, like, let it sit for 20 minutes depending on the yeah. temperature and then paint it on it. That's the one that I found was easier to paint with. It's, yeah. it's a thicker product. This one is meant to be thinner because it's meant to flood and drop. Right. So that one's thicker. It's meant to uh, cure quick and, and be dimensional. But that is better for doming. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Doming. Yeah, yeah. doming. Very new technique for learning. Yeah. So this final thing is a sealer. It's glitter oh, blast. I love this stuff. Yeah, so this is... Kind of like an aquanet, except it's um, you can see it more. It's uh, it's got more of a like if you spray it out, if you spray this on a surface, it's almost invisible. You spray this on a surface, it looks like tiny hairs. So I don't really recommend it on velvets, uh, costumes where you're going to be able to really see it dark surfaces, but for lighter surfaces, uh, it, it works good. But it dries really fast. So if you're using it as an adhesive. You have to work fast. Get work fast or work with a friend. Okay, so I've got a couple things here. Um, spray paint. Okay, so uh, paint is a great adhesive. Is spray paint a great adhesive? No, not really. Why? Because it dries too fast. So um, recently I did the um, uh, hubcaps, I guess they are, on that trailer for the unicorn for the... Oh, yeah. Okay, so... But I, they look really good. Yeah, so I masked <laughs> these wheels off. We had no time. Like, the next day was like the 4th of July. I had no time. So I got green spray paint, and I, I sprayed the inside of these wheels so heavy, it was practically dripping. It wasn't. It was very, very close to dripping. And I took craft glitter, and I threw it on there, and blew it all over, and then kind of patted it with gloved hands. And yes, it's stuck. Um, will it stick forever? Will the rain knock it off? Yeah, definitely. Spray paint is not a great adhesive, but it can sure get you out of a jam. So um, I'm just gonna Down say. Down dirty and quick. Yeah, I'm gonna say if it, you're up against the wall, yes, but otherwise, mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not great. Yeah. It's just and too bad. And regular paint will, um, if you do a, a coating over the top of it, it'll sit on top. And, um, but if you get, start mixing it in, it'll just coat every flake and it will not show up. Yeah, absolutely. We have glitter disappears. Yeah, every day I would say we have people calling up wanting to mix our glitters into the paints and we have to say no. It just don't do it. It's a waste. You're going to lose out completely. But if you are doing like a float or you're in a situation where you have a set piece or something and you are going to be painting it anyway, pick the same color as your glitter. So like if you're doing like a red dragon, paint your dragon red, then take red glitter and throw it on top of the red paint because you'll use less glitter. It's a beautiful thing. 
Uh, you don't have to have every single, you know, uh, inch of it covered. You can just go ahead and, you know, get the majority of it covered. But mm -hmm. if some of that red paint shows through, your eyes just being fooled by that beautiful glitter. So I love paint as an adhesive, but put it down heavy. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't mix it in. Absolutely, don't mix it in and, and get on a heavy, heavy coat. You know, these, they're always talking about two light coats. No, <laughs> no, at least one heavy coat. So I started using the silicone for one of my projects. We're currently working on a mermaid tail. Um, you can definitely mix it in with it, but I don't suggest it. Uh, the silicone's really thick, and you're not going to see a lot of the sparkle. It, you know, kind of falls under a lot of the other thick glosses and um, thick glues. So it does hold if you want to do a light layer over it. Um, you know, you can mix a couple different glitter sizes. I'm sticking to a chunky for photography purposes. Um, and I'm just pushing it over the top and then pulling it back a little bit. Uh, the silicone definitely holds it, which is something that I was a little bit surprised by, but I've Kind of been working with it and trying to see how that's gonna work long term. So far, it seems to be holding, and I'm pretty excited about how that tail is gonna come out. How is it drying? Is it is it opaque or clear? Um, I'd say even with the clear, it comes out. It's still a little bit milky. Tenny, yeah, a little, a little bit milky. How thick are you doing it? Pretty thick. I've got some. We're that's looking why it's at milky. scales. Yeah. If yeah. you do it really thin, I'm sure it won't be as yeah, noticeable. Exactly. So, um, like I said, you can definitely mix the glitter in with it, but cool. um, I would suggest putting it over the top. And you're, you're doing poly, right? Yeah, we're working with a, a polyiridescent 